What do you think, man? Day two, we had a little weather come in, rained cool. a little bit. Yeah. Temperatures drop. We're all layered up. Hey, I don't know. I'm excited about it. You know, obviously, uh, we're on Clear Lake. Clear Lake is a, is a really special place. You know, they're they're biting right now. But this little cold snap, I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm excited with the possibility of big ones again. And with Jared Littner, Clear Lake goat. No. Greatest of all time to ever fish Clear Lake. <laughs> I'm excited to get out here and, uh, you know, maybe the fish that we found are still there and we're going to catch a lot of fish. But either way, we're going to have fun, man. Yeah, Looking forward a, to it. It's for a fun sure. time. Uh, our original plan, you know, we're we're going to head down south, but then it's supposed to gust like 29, 30 miles an hour. So we don't know if we're going to do that. We're kind of going to let the day dictate what we do. Yeah. Find some, find some new spots, catch some big ones. Yeah, that's it. Let's do it. Sore lift them all. Uh oh. Got him. What was that? Third cast? Third cast in the morning. Power pull down. Double Autumn. up. <laughs> hey, that's the way to start the day, man. I think they're still here, huh, buddy? Maybe it'll be like yesterday. Get these ones out of the way, and then we'll catch Mr. Big. Hey, this is awesome, man. Phone's ringing. Got him. Figured I'd change it up a little bit. Get the old Strike King two tap on, you know, give them a little something different. We caught so many fish. The regular lipless crankbait. Hey, that'll work. You know, so I think something pretty cool this week is how we're fishing these baits, you know. This is not your your standard just straight retrieve. We're just really fishing it really slow, you know, keeping it on the bottom, kind of popping it out of the grass. And it just really... It's almost like you're throwing a little jig, like dragging it, kind of lifting it. Yeah, just fishing it, like, like you say, just like a jig. And just really keeping that bait in the strike zone, mimicking, you know, a, a dying shad and when they bite it it's a fun bite i mean you'll pop it up and drop it and they'll they'll thump it i mean it's it's definitely been and every day the you know i kind of mentioned that yesterday today it might be a more aggressive you know like traditionally when i've caught them up here in other places it's more like this like making a big sweep but you know you kind of got to fish it try different retrieves different angles different everything when you know where they're at. Yeah. Ding. Throw the swimmer in there. Oh no. Oh no. I still think that one last night was a big one, dude. First cast of First the swim. First cast of the swim big bait. One? That might be a big one, dude. Man, that thing slacklined it. That might be a no. Put the Strike King flashy swimmer on. That's a nice fish. Strike King Rage swimmer. Look at that. <laughs> Gosh, these fish are so healthy. You know, we throw in those flipless crankbaits and something I love to throw up here at Clear Lake is that owner flashy swimmer. It's got that little little flash to it, a little Strike King Rage swimmer. That'll work there. That's a nice one. That bite was awesome. What size of Rage swimmer are you throwing? You know, it's a 3.75 inch. You know, it's just a little bit smaller Rage swimmer, but you know, the bait right now is not that big out here. I definitely, you know, I like this owner flashy swimmer. You know, you can rig it Texas rigged, but you got that flash so you can kind of get the, the flash in there, but you can wind it over the grass without getting hung up. Oh man, 
They're on the swimmer. <laughs> they're on the swimmer. I'm gonna try this little. Yeah. Ooh. Dude, this. that one just went Tink. slack. <laughs> I'm like, I know what that is. Dude, I got a small man. Small one. Fun, man. Still fun. Hey, any, any swim bait bite is fun. No matter how big they are. You know, so when I'm throwing this, this flashy swimmer with this, you know, swim bait on there, what I like to do is, uh, you know, we're fishing this, this patch of grass that we were throwing the lipless crankbaits in. But, uh, you know, with the lipless crankbait, we're doing a steady, you know, slow up and down retrieve. This, I'm just swimming it over the top of the grass, really trying to tick the top of the grass. You know, the, the real I'm using today, Daiwa Tattoo Elite, slower gear ratio. This is six, three to one. So I'm really just slowly winding this thing, ticking the top of the grass. It's a more steady retrieve. And like I say, the bites I've had so far, when they bite it, they let you know. I mean, they, they, they're hitting it so hard, they're, they're knocking slack in the line. And also, you know, I'm going to a, a bigger diameter line. You know, this is an 18 pound Daiwa J Fluoro, fluorocarbon, 100% fluorocarbon. Really, really strong. And as far as the rod, you know, this is just a, a Daiwa Tattoo Elite, seven foot, three inch, multi-purpose rod, brand other design. You know, it's a rod you can you can do so much with, but really good rod for for throwing these swim baits. There he is. There he Way is. There. Oh, Ooh. good one. Good one. Good one. Short pause. Short pause, man. Fishing it, fishing it really slow. Fishing that. Oh, oh yeah. I just got a bit too. That's a good Look one. at that. You know, one thing I think it's so important is changing out the stock hooks. You know, this is an owner STX 38, and uh, it, it's just it makes all the difference in the world. You know, I mean, when you're fishing for some of these big fish and these fish are barely hooked, you have to have the right hook. And this has been kind of my go-to. All year, you know, with top water, lipless crankbaits, crankbaits. Nice one for sure. That's a fatty Come big girl. <laughs> oh, look at that. Look at those hooks, man. Just pin. Owner STX38. You know, it's a lighter wire hook. It's a it's a new material here. Uh, they're stronger, they're sharper, and they're lighter wire. You know, so you're just getting really good penetration on these bigger fish. That'll work, man. That's a nice one. Look at the eyes bugging out. Bugging out already. You know what, Jared, let's go ahead and throw her in the live well, get some pictures a little bit later. Great. Beautiful fish. There one. Nice one? Nah. <laughs> It's a fun one. I mean, look how fat it is, though. Oh, he's barely hooked. Barely hooked. You know, like Cody just mentioned, it's important treble hooks. I mean, dude, if you don't have the right hooks, you're, you're look at that. You're not, you know, you're not giving yourself that opportunity to land that fish, you know. Um, these here are, Pro car EWG. I like the EWG style on a lot of these, you know, lipless crankbait. Uh, certain top waters. A lot of my cranking fish. I like uh, I like that EWG style. Pro car is actually coming out with a Pro V bend uh, treble hook, which uh, I had some samples and I've lost some baits and so I don't have many more. But uh, you got to make sure and check those out. Tackle Warehouse is going to have them soon. Again, it's a Pro V band. Those are just regular EWG. 
I put on oversized the hooks. I put on one number four on the back and a number two on the front. And I think what that does is, anyway, let me let this fish. But I, I just like that just because when they, they usually eat the head of that bait first and you got that bigger hook, you're gonna land more of them. And when you're, when you're doing that yo-yo technique or, or you know, you're know you ripping it out of that grass, those hooks, if you have two number twos, they're gonna hook up together because the bait's only that long. So number four on the back, number two on the front, Trocar UWG, I, know, I don't know, do you do that too? You used to put a bigger hook on the front I, or not? Most of the time I do. You know, today I'm just throwing two number fours, you know, on the red eye. And do you realize we're at Clear Lake? Yeah, I know, I know. I need to, I need to upgrade here. I'm just going for the finesse approach, man. Just well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't talk any smack because you just caught a big one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We know there's fish here, dude. Let's fire up the hydro wave. See if we can ignite them. Um, you know, I get a lot of questions. I'm sure you do too, Cody. That does that thing really work? And uh, I, I can testify it does. Um, and you know, everybody's like, "Well, what? When do you use it? Because you're always fishing shallow. You know, you're a bank beater, and you, you fish in that ten to zero to ten foot range. And you know, even when I'm up shallow." I, I like it just because I think it takes away from the boat sounds. Like, you know, your live well's running, you're walking around the boat, opening and closing lids, you're casting, you're talking to your par partner or what have you. And I think it gives something else for the fish to focus on. Like, oh man, there's a, there's a natural kind of sound right here, you know, and it, it kind of takes that, that, you know, I'm not gonna bite attitude out of them, I feel like. And then out here, just turn it on, we don't know. We see them out here on the panoptics. Um, maybe it'll work. Uh, we'll try some different settings and see what happens. But what, what do you see when you're fishing deep? Cause you like, you know, fishing deeper and stuff like that. Yeah, I agree 100% with what you just said. You know, it'll really mask the sound of the boat. You know, this boat, the, the pinging of the sonars and stuff like that, it's gonna take a lot of that away. But when, when I'm fishing offshore, fishing deep, I love to crank that hydro wave up. You know, and what you're going to do, you're actually going to draw fish to the boat uh, or you're going to find fish. You know, if you're going down, you know, right now it's cold. Those fish, sometimes you catch them and there's actually mud on their belly. Yeah. Uh, you'll draw them off the bottom and you'll locate them. Then you could drop down on them, video game fish them. I've cool. seen that same thing at Lopez Lake. Yeah. Like it gets really cold there in the winter and you, I'll fish well-known spots and you'll turn that thing on and they'll lift up off the bottom like you're saying. Yep. And you might not catch them right then and there, but at least you just found those fish. You know, those are the fish that are hard to see on your electronics, and uh, you could come back later on in the day and catch them. So I think it's a must have. I mean, every time I, I put the boat in the water, you know, I put it on just for the fact of trying to mask the boat as well, but, yeah. you know, locating fish and catching more. It, it doesn't hurt. No. It, and it certainly helps, I, I think. I mean, you know, and, and there's so many settings. I, I kind of like the, there's all. Oh, Dang it, dude, I just had one on the, little, on the little blade bait. Um, I kind of like the power play <laughs> or power pattern, and I like that, uh, what is it, Feeding Frenzy? Yeah. I think it's called. Hey, I know it's a shocker, but Finesse Offshore oh, we is my jam. That's the deal? That's the deal. I'll have to remember that. So when I'm out there, clear water, fishing like 40 feet, don't power play them? No power play, bud. Light line, drop shot, <laughs> finesse. Well, finesse maybe that's my offshore. problem. I, I put on the power pattern or power play and I turn the volume all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like smooth jazz out there. Okay, I got you. I got you. You wanna go that way? Yeah. Try it. Yeah, let's go that way. Yeah, let's go that way. Uh-oh. Big one? No. Little one. Still fun though. It's a different color. Pulled the old switcheroo on you. Look at that. Tricked him. Look at that hog. <laughs> Cody, Cody rolled his eyes at me. I rolled my my eyes underneath my glasses. There they are. Mm. Uh oh. Looks like a big one. Uh, 
don't know, man. I haven't seen them yet. Do I have them foul hooked? No, little. Oh, he's a nice one. Why am I saying little? I don't know. You're, we're getting spoiled. Dude, this is stupid. Trocar Treble's got him. Two so, casts in a row. So look what we've found here. So this is the deal. It's a nice fish. I'll let him go now. All right, so this spot, it's a well-known spot, just like many others at Clear Lake, but uh, I came down here a couple weeks, two or three weeks ago when I was here, and uh, there was a big line of grass that kind of ran out from this reed line, and it was out here, and it was almost like it was too thick to throw a, any kind of moving bait, whether it's a trap or spinner bait, anything. I mean, it was real thick. Well, since then it's died off, and uh, I was kind of like, man, did it all, you know, rot out and get blown out? And uh, well, with the pan optics here, you can see it right here. So I was scanning around, shot out here, and that's where the grass is at. You can see it. But uh, we caught three fish in a row, you know. And so a lot of people, the pan optics deal, you know, they want to see schools of fish, bait fish. But it's a it's a tool. So use it to find structure, whether it's grass like we're fishing here, rocks, you know, brush piles, stump, brush piles, whatever. I use it a lot when I'm fishing shallow, and I'll kind of just pan around. Like if I was flipping this reed line, there's rocks and stuff out here. Well, if you pan, use your trolling motor, pan pan that pan optics around, you might see a target that's you would never even think was there or to throw out, and you might catch a big one off of it. So. We gotta find more grass though. Should be some more out here. So that's grass right here. It's all grass. Little stick, little stobs of it. Kind of pan around. See all that grass? Mm -hmm. That's what we were fishing. Huh. There he is. There he is, man. Just like you're saying, Jared, all that grass down there. Bunch of grass, you know, and it's it's we fish down this whole bank, and then that's three bites in a row, back to back to back, pretty much. All right, there, Meyer. I think uh, the wind's kind of dying down. It's not kind of what it predicted. Uh, may get a little gusty, but I think we should be all right. Let's go down there here in a minute and try some. Uh, Maybe deep cranking, some jigs, maybe a bit big swim bait or something. See if we can go after a different, you know, group of fish. Uh, but real quick before we leave, you know, the rods, even yesterday and this morning, you know, having the right rods for that lipless bait action is very, very important. I mean, you gotta Absolutely. have a parabolic bend. Um, I prefer, you know, my ritual angling rod, seven foot seven. We make one that's in that seven foot two range. But it doesn't matter which brand you're going to throw. You got to, when you're throwing those lipless baits, anything with a treble hook, crank baits, stuff like that, even some of the topwater baits, you got to have a kind of a composite, you know, feel to your rod. You don't want straight graphite. That's going to pull hooks and you're going to end up with a lot of problems. So I know you're using your uh, Tatula rods, right? Yeah. So uh, same thing, just like you said, you know, I personally, these last two days, I like the Tatula Elite seven foot four glass rod so very parabolic very forgiving um, but you know now i'm throwing a square bill with the seven foot two you know i just i prefer a seven foot to a seven foot four inch rod you know somewhere in that range you know this is what i like here the seven foot four uh for the lipless crankbait but those rods are really really key upgrading your treble hooks whether it's owner treble hook or a, a trocar like jared's throwing that again is key to putting more fish in the boat so i say you're right i say we go down south if you guys like this vlog today, make sure you like, share, tag a friend. Check us out next week. See what we find in the promised land. Let's do it. Let's do it.